Good afternoon and welcome back to yet another T. Martin Airlines flight. So you consider yourself quite the adventurer, huh? You want to go explore the lost continent. This is going to be a fun itinerary. I'm glad you guys chose it. Antarctica, baby. We are going to be going as far south as you can possibly go. We're going to be exploring the least inhabited continent. Maybe check it out some of the research bases out there. See a couple of polar bears. There aren't actually any polar bears in the game, but... We here at T. Martin Airlines like to believe we might be able to make the impossible happen. So uh, I'm excited, man. We're here at Ushuaia International Airport in Ushuaia, Argentina. We are basically at the very tip of South America here. It's the closest city to Antarctica, furthest south city in the world. And we are going to be taking this Zlin Shock Ultra. It looks pretty sick. I saw it pop up in the game. I hadn't seen it before. I was thinking about taking our, our you know, Savage Cub. But uh, this thing looks equally as capable and honestly looks a little bit better. I, I like the, the gray and black. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get ready to go. Let's get ourselves set up. Kind of get, your, get your, good, your good posture here. Make sure you've got a nice view. Let's take a look outside the aircraft. I believe these are the Andes Mountains that we're looking at around us, especially back that way, which is pretty cool. Yeah, this is uh, going to be fun. So this is one of the, the furthest south airports in the world. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of airstrips and stuff down there in Antarctica. Maybe try to land on a couple of them. But so uh, we're going to take off, and we are going to be immediately banking left to go straight south. So if we take a look at our map here, you guys will see. Here's the southern tip of South America, and over here is the Antarctic Peninsula. So there are a lot of research bases kind of dotted throughout here. And as you go deeper, the U.S. has them all over the place. The U.S. is the country that has the, the most, like, you know, people down there and, and assets down there and stuff. I think we have the one that's right next to the South Pole, which is basically in the middle of it. That's like the very southernmost tip of the world. We might try to get there. I don't know, though. It might be kind of boring because it's, it's a bit of a long flight and it's just, you know, flat ground. But, um, yeah, we, we have them dotted all over the place. There's, we're we're going to talk about it when we get there. There's, there's tons of countries that represent it. Technically, Antarctica isn't owned by anyone. Nobody has any any say or ruling over it or anything like that, which is uh, is a good thing. We all share it. It's just kind of like a, a haven for science and research. So yeah, Ushuaia behind us. Don't want to forget about her. She's uh, she's about 680 miles north of Antarctica. So uh, we've got a bit of a long trek here in front of us. And uh, like I said, it is the southernmost city in the world. I believe there might be a couple of other villages that are a little bit further south, but I mean, those are like, you know, we're talking fewer than a thousand people. This is a legitimate, like bustling city, heavy, heavy tourism industry, obviously. They're also here on the sea. So, you know, lots of fishing and, and shipping and stuff like that. Um, you know, the, this, this tip is obviously a, a very big part of maritime history. And even today, it's still a pretty big deal. You guys may have heard about this, this little guy right here. We're actually gonna head to him first. So let's make sure we get a good heading. That's, uh, that's Cape Horn. So Cape Horn, you probably heard about it in your history books and stuff like that. It, it's, you know, basically that's the area where back in the day when people were trying to trade, like say Europe to Australia or something like that, the quickest way was to go around South America. So this was kind of like your point of, oh, hey, I finally made it halfway. You know, we're, we're finally changing direction and that sort of thing, which is, is kind of interesting. Uh, you know, really kind of almost a rite of passage. It, it's, it's a pretty tough, you know, area to sail through because you're so far south and you have the Atlantic and the Pacific and the Southern Oceans all coming together and you have all these different climates and weather and temperatures and stuff like very heavy storms large waves, that sort of thing. It's, uh, it, it's definitely kind of a, almost a bragging right to say you made it around there. So uh, with time, we eventually built the Panama Canal. So, you know, down there in Panama, South Central America, you, you have that canal that we dug out that ships can go through. A lot of ships will end up going through there now. They, they have to pay a huge, huge, huge fee to Panama to be able to use it. But, um, you know, it, it cuts off a lot of time and a lot of fuel and stuff like that because you get to completely cut out going around South America. There still are some ships that will go around there, some, you know, mega tankers and mega cargo ships that, that can't fit in the Panama Canal. I think some cruise ships go around and some people just go around it for fun just because, you know, it was, it was such a, a big pastime back in the day. So we're going to go check that out. It's going to be a fun time. I'm looking forward to it. 
and uh, we'll, we'll see what she has to offer. So what we're seeing here in front of us is Tierra del Fuego, which translates to Land of Fire, and it's basically a giant archipelago. All of this is, is just kind of like a big group of islands. Like, even, even Ushuaia back here is not on mainland Argentina. These are split pretty much down the middle. There's a line somewhere. It's not going to show on here, but on the right side is Argentina. Over here on the left is Chile. But, um, yeah, th these are all little islands and stuff. Primarily uninhabited, I would guess. You know, throughout history, there have probably been some people that have settled out here. And, you know, you might have some little little airstrips and stuff like that that we might be able to see. But for the most part, you couldn't live out here. You know what I mean? There's, there's no... Uh, infrastructure, there's no way to get food or, or water or anything like that. But, uh, you know, kind of, just kind of an interesting part of the world. I honestly, I I didn't know that it was this broken up down here. I've, I've always figured the tip of South America was just kind of like the tip of Africa or something. You know what I mean? But it's it's not. It's got all these crazy little islands and stuff. And uh, we're, we're heading for this one right here. Going to try to buzz down a, a little bit lower here. Just kind of see what we're working with. So yeah, this is this is super super rough terrain. You know, few trees here and there, but it looks like it's really rocky. I haven't uh, I haven't seen much in terms of of any settlements or anything like that. Like I'm I'm sure a few people live out here, but those are a brave few people. You know what I mean? That would be pretty cool. It's like those people you see that like go out to Alaska. Like into deep Alaska where there aren't any people and you're never going to run into anyone. And they just like build a house there and just live for free and live off the land. Be, uh, be kind of an, an interesting, interesting way to do things. But um, yeah, this is, this is pretty cool. This is what the, the tip of South America looks like. Learn something new today. This guy right here, this headland is, uh, is Cape Horn. We're coming up on it right now. So that is... The southern, actually, I don't think it's the southernmost tip. I think this little piece of land might technically still be South America, but uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, this is like the ships would try to get around this point. Once they got around this point, they were good to go. Dude, imagine when you were out here, try to try to make your way to Australia from Europe before you had maps, before you knew what this stuff was. You'd be so confused. There were all these little islands all in one tiny little area. <laughs> Dude, it'd, it'd be like a maze. You would 100% get lost. You'd come all the way down this coast, coming around here, make it around this point. Well, first of all, that would be weird because you'd be going back east. You'd be like, what in the world is going on? You'd make it around this point. You'd be excited. You'd go back in here and, oh, that would that would not be good. Now, just out of curiosity's sake here, I'm going to put it on, on live weather. I don't currently have it on live just because I'm recording this super early in the morning and I knew it was going to be dark and, and foggy and misty and do this. I mean, this this is moody. This this does not look as friendly as we had it in the daytime. But uh, I wanted to put it on. I was just I was curious to see if we were going to have any any crazy waves or anything. It looks like it's pretty calm in here. I would imagine around all these islands they're pretty well protected. But when you get out here into the Drake's Passage, that's that's where it gets pretty intense. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put this back on uh, on few clouds. I just like being able to see things a little bit better. And uh, I do believe we are coming up on Cape Horn right here. So this should be interesting. But yeah, I mean, the, the seas look pretty calm. It's known to be pretty rough. So the, the Drake's Passage that we're about to cross right here, I believe it's about 600 miles wide, and it's the most narrow passage to Antarctica that we have. So like from any piece of land to Antarctica, it's the shortest distance. So it's the most traveled direction. Do we have a waterfall right there? Is that real? Dude, that looks pretty sick. I know there's a monument dedicated to all the sailors who lost their lives at Cape Horn. There's also, I think, a chapel and a lighthouse. That might be a waterfall there. That might just be rock. So yeah, this is this is Cape Horn right here, fellas. Many a seafarer from years ago. This was kind of like their their halfway point. This let them know they were in the right spot. We're gonna head due south, and we're we're gonna we're gonna fly over the Drake's Passage. So it's um you know most people travel through there. The the tourism stuff mostly happens through there as well. There are around forty thousand people a year who visit Antarctica, mostly on cruises. I really want to do one. A lot of them are kind of like smaller, more boutique ships. Because they're smaller, they can get up a lot closer and you can get off of them and like, you know, go 
hike around the ice sheets and the glaciers and stuff and go kayaking through the crazy canyons. It, it looks pretty cool. I, I'd really love to see some polar bears and killer whales and stuff like that. But um, it, it's supposed to be really, really rough. Like all, I've, I've looked into Antarctica sailings before and they all highly recommend bringing a ton of Dramamine and stuff like that because these waters just get so crazy. It's one of the like lost areas of the world and I think it's kind of cool how they call it Drake's Passage just because I mean like it, it makes me think of, of an uncharted game. Like Nathan Drake would definitely come down here and go on some sort of a treasure hunt or something. So we're gonna aim a little bit a little bit to the left here. I guess we're gonna go a little bit southeast. We're gonna head for the tip of the Antarctic Peninsula and uh, I'll see you guys when we get a little bit closer. And that my friends is Antarctica. Just look at it, looming ahead of us. One of the, the least inhabited, least explored continents. One of the harshest continents. Got some crazy, crazy facts to share with you guys now. Let's be honest, it doesn't really look that great from here. It looks like it's still rendering in. We are on full out max ultra settings. I turned everything all the way up. Oop, oop, here we go. We've got some stuff starting to pop up. See, that's starting to look a little bit better. We need all these soft boys to, to man up. Come on, get hard. Well, here we go, here we go, here we go. It's coming across. Love to see it. Maybe we just had to get a little bit closer. I mean, it looks like we're close, but we really aren't that close yet. Like, it, it takes so long, and this is such a, a slow plane. Yeah, it's 100% distance-based. I mean, we have our distance all the way up, too, our render distance, but um, you guys can see, like, these are starting to come in a little bit better. Looks like we've got a little glitch in the, the, you know, simulation here, but that's okay. That's to be expected. It's 2020 after all. But as as we're getting closer, it's kind of creeping further back and, and starting to get into some of those back there. So we're, we're just, we're, we're going to admire the view, watch it kind of render in slowly. I've got some crazy facts for you guys. So I, I really, I enjoy this series so much. A, because it's so well supported, like you guys love it too. But B, because it's just, it's fun to fly and it's fun to, to learn new things and, and learn things about the planet. So this is the fifth largest continent, which is, um, you know, one of the smallest. It's okay though. Small, small packages can, can, you know, be appreciated sometimes. At least that's what, what Chelsea tells me. In terms of size, it's about double the size of Australia. So that, that kind of puts it in perspective for you. It's still a massive, massive, massive area. But uh, it's, it's, you know, not one of the, the biggest land areas that we have. So it is almost entirely covered in ice. The ice sheet that covers it is on average about 1.9 kilometers deep, aka about 6,200 feet. So this thing is frozen through to the core. I mean, global warming's doing its best, but it's it's going to take a lot, a lot more than that. I actually don't even want to say that because we are losing all kinds of pieces of it that are melting into the ocean and rising the sea levels. So we, we got to do better. Let's let's start treating the planet better. Oh, this is just so magnificent. It's still not loading in how I would like it to, though. Look at this. I'm going to I'm going to back it up. I'm going to put it on ultra. We have everything all the way 100% as good as you can get it. Apply and save. It, it just, it looks a little, it looks a little soft, guys. Maybe it's not that great here because this isn't really like one of the major areas. We're going to go a little bit further uh, south to be able to see some of the actual, you know, bases and stuff like that. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Like some of these look pretty good, but all of these little just like, there's no... There's no texture to them. They're just like little humps. This is still so crazy though. Like it would just, oh. One of the, the least adventured parts of the world and we're, we're seeing it front and center right here. Even if it is a little bit soft, you still kind of get the idea. This is still so incredible. So yeah, covered in massive ice sheets. It's, uh, you know, one of the most intense areas in the world in that regard. But even with all that water, which if you guys didn't know, ice is frozen water, the more you know. Uh, it's actually one of the driest continents in the world. So it, it hardly gets any rain or any snow or anything like that. There's, there's hardly any precipitation. It's pretty much like an icy desert, which sounds a little, little bit like an oxymoron, but uh, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of there. It just kind of stays like this. It's really windy and it's really cold. 
So the average temps are like negative 76 to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there on your average day, depending on the season and if the sun's out and stuff like that. Uh, the coldest temperature on record ever has been recorded here at negative 128 degrees Fahrenheit, which is ridiculous. Never heard of that. We got down... I. When I was growing up in Illinois and we had like a couple of bad winter storms, I think we got down in like the negative 40s. And it was so bad that they were like worried about people's lungs freezing when they were outside. So negative 128, naturally, like that just doesn't even make sense. Look at our little, look at our little plane shadow down there. It's just so desolate. I don't know why, but that, that just, that makes me feel so lonely. There's nobody out here. It's just us. If we have any issues, we run out of gas. That would be a really terrible way to die. So like I said, really windy as well. Uh, you know, I think the record of, of a wind gust or wind, wind speeds, I don't know if it was sustained or not, is 218 miles per hour, which is ridiculous. I mean, that's, you know, like one of, if not the strongest hurricane that we've ever had on record. It's just, it's such an unforgiving place. Just super cold, super dry, no vegetation, very few animals. It, 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 it is one of the most intense places in the world. This is so cool. I love these little flat spots out here. We could totally land the plane anywhere we wanted to. I'm, I'm going to try to continue south towards some of the bases, I believe. Oh, we're actually getting really close to one over here. So this is, uh, I think, Chile's main base. We're going to go through this, this crazy spire thing here. I don't even know what to call it. We should see a base just on the other side of it. I believe it's Chile, so it's called, I have it pulled up here, uh, Base Presidente Eduardo Frey Montalva. So uh, that's that's kind of like their main research base. Um, many, many countries have multiple bases throughout, but like I, I said earlier, a lot of the, the main ones are, are kind of, you know, on this little peninsula just because it's closest and, and easiest to get to for the rest of the world. But uh, it looks like, is that it down there? Dude, that's so sick. Yeah, we can totally see it down there. So we're, we're going to go, we're going to go get a slightly closer look. Now, in terms of Antarctica, we should talk about like the politics and, and you know, how it's represented and that sort of thing. Because obviously a lot of countries are like, you know, what's mine's mine. I, I want to own that. I want my name to be on that. This, this is my, you know, territory. You can't come here. I'm going to defend it, that sort of thing. So Antarctica actually isn't owned by anyone. There are 18 countries that regularly send scientists to it. U.S. is by far number one, followed by Russia, Chile, Argentina, and Australia makes sense for Chile and Argentina because they're so close. The Antarctic Treaty was signed in 1961. It was signed, I think up until this point, by like 53 different countries. But it, it basically sets the rules for it. And it basically says, just don't be a D-bag. Like, don't, don't go out there. Don't be rude. This is, you know, kind of a, a world territory. Let's all treat it respectfully. Let's not get in each other's way. Let's help each other out. And let's, you know, use this for science, for the betterment of the world to, you know, Obviously, with global warming and stuff like that, this is a, a major key component in, in gathering data and stuff. So it's, uh, it's pretty cool. For the most part, it's been really good. Uh, crime is, is interesting. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, yeah, for, for the most part, it's, it's worked out well. So everybody's just kind of like, you know, there's no finders keepers here. We all just get to share it. We all get to build our little bases and stuff. So this, uh, this is the base. All right. I can see a little car driving around down there. I mean, this is pretty cool. I'm gonna have to find a photo of the actual base. It looks like we have a road over here. Kind of interesting. Dude, this is so crazy. Can you imagine living out here? That's the thing, dude. People do actually live here. So depending on the time of year in the summertime, usually around 10,000 people live on Antarctica and the winter time, which is where it gets really rough, that number drops to about 1,000. So, uh, you know, even though it is the least populated continent, there are people out here. There, there is society. There, there is, you know, there's not really a big use for money and the normal things that you would think of in society. But everybody kind of plays their role. They all work together. And uh, somehow they find a way to live out here in one of the most desolate, just ridiculous places on Earth where pretty much everything's trying to kill you. Whether it's the polar bears or the wind speeds or the... 
hypothermia. So next up, we are going to be heading to this guy right here. This is called Deception Islands. And uh, I've, I've got a feeling it's going to be pretty cool. So let's make sure we're, we're headed in that direction. It's going to be quite a, quite a journey. But uh, let's do it. So I do believe we're, we're coming up on it right here. Let's go ahead and check this out. Yep, this this is Deception Island here. So you guys can see it's it's kind of a natural harbor. It's You have this one little entry here. It's covered by land on all sides. So obviously if you're, if you're bringing a ship down here or something like that, that would be a very safe spot to keep it. You get storms that come through, you get some crazy weather, you get some crazy waves and stuff. If you have your ship in here, it's pretty much going to be safe. Except for the fact that this is an active volcano. The the island, the land around it is the caldera. It's like the very top of the volcano. It's the circular part. And this in here is the crater. And it's still active. It's actually very active. Back in the 60s is the last time that it's... I don't know if you would call it an eruption, but it had some activity and it damaged some of the research stations and equipment and vehicles and boats and stuff like that that were out here so i just like that's that's so funny dude i mean it it, it let's be honest it kind of looks like a volcano like it, it, it kind of looks a little bit sketchy when you see all these other little things here and then you have this perfectly circle island with the nice little entrance and it's just like the perfect little safe haven nope it's an active volcano it's gonna blow your shit up. I mean, just just look at this. Just take a moment to to take this in. Like this, this is just so incredible. The Earth is just so beautiful. Like all all that we've seen just in this series so far. Just in what is this like eighteen episodes or something like that? And we we haven't even begun to scratch the surface. Just look 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 at how far and wide our planet expands. And all the, the crazy terrains and, and mysteries that it has to offer. That is just, that is, this is, this is so incredible. Look at that view back there. Look at that. That is crazy. So we're on to one of the final stops that I wanted to show you guys. We're going to have to, I believe, go over here. Oop, be careful, Trev. We're really, we're really, we're really scooting here. I need to pull up my, uh, my Google Maps to double check. So it's actually... I believe it's right here. This is going to be Port Lockroy, and it's it's one of the most visited tourist attractions. Like a lot of the cruises that come in, go there and stuff like that. On Port Lockroy, which I believe is is uh, kind of run and, and managed by the UK, uh, some historical district or, or company or something like that. But um, they actually have a gift shop and a post office. It is the southernmost post office in the world. You can go there and you can actually send a letter. Now, even just a little letter that normally would take a couple of days to get to where it's going is going to take two, three, four weeks, something like that. But imagine being able to go down here and sending a letter back home from Antarctica. That's pretty cool that that's even possible. I wonder how much the shipping fees are. I bet it's I bet it's pretty insane. So we're we're gonna go see what we can see there. If we if there was gonna be a base that had like a lot of detail in it, I figured this would probably be the one. And that's uh, that's why I wanted wanted to head in this direction. Just gonna find a couple of fun facts here. Now we were talking earlier about just how savage Antarctica is. Like you know, coldest place, driest place, windiest place. It's it's really tough to live. Like the fact that we've been able to come out here and build stuff is very impressive. Animals don't really have it any better here. There really aren't many animals. I don't think there are many plants or anything like that. Obviously in the waters, you're gonna have different whales and sharks and stuff like that. Coming around this corner here, hoping to, hoping to see Lockroy. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Hmm. It should be right here on this little tip. It should be right there, but it's not there. There's no, there's no Port Lockroy. I'll throw I'll throw a couple of couple of images on screens for you guys. But yeah, so we, we've got animals in the water, of course. That that makes a little bit more sense. You know, some of some of them are accustomed to the cold water. The only land animals that are like living and reproducing and, and naturally thriving here are the emperor penguins, which is uh, is pretty cool. Would be awesome to see those guys in person. 
You know, I, I have seen them in, in zoos and stuff like that. But yeah, those guys are always swimming around, hobbling around, doing their thing around here. And uh, somehow they've they've found a way to adapt and survive. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and try to get a little bit of altitude here. Try to take a peek at the great vast beyond that is Antarctica. Dude, this is just such, such an insane place. This was so cool to witness this and kind of get a feel for what it looks like. Just one of the, one of the most desolate places on earth. And uh, we've officially been there, which is pretty awesome. So, I mean, we could, if we take a look at this map, we could kind of go in through the peninsula here. This is just the peninsula, dude. Like, the continent starts down here. I don't even know if you can go all the way down there. I don't even know if the game has it. You guys can see we've got some some pretty crazy mountains in here. The tallest mountain is uh, Mount Vincent at about 16,000 feet, which is pretty impressive. In fact, Antarctica is, is one of the, the highest elevated continents in the world as well. So that's, that's kind of interesting. Obviously, you're going to have crazy mountains all over the place. And, uh, you know, we, we could go try to fly deeper into the heart of it but I, I don't I don't think it's gonna look a lot different than this if anything it's not gonna be as pretty because we aren't gonna have the water to look at so I feel like this was you know a, a pretty a pretty good look at it one final fun fact I've got for you guys there have actually been 10 people born on Antarctica 10 people are in Antarcticanese First one was in 1979, and uh, since then, nine more. Ooh, we're starting to get a little little bit of turbulence here, folks. Make sure you buckle up. But, uh, yeah, that, that would just be such a crazy story. I guess I guess those scientists are out there. You know, it, it gets a little lonely. It gets a little cold in those winter months. You got to do something to keep yourself occupied. Oh, that reminds me, the crime in Antarctica. I, I thought this was, was really interesting. So you're here in this desolate place with, you know, at max... 10,000 other humans, you'd think you'd all want to get together and not do any bad stuff. You don't really see much in terms of like violent crime, like there aren't really any robberies because like money doesn't really do anything here. What are you going to do with money? You can't spend it on anything. I think there may have been a murder or two, but that's fine. I mean, that's that's not that big of a deal. It's just just a murder. But uh, uh, one of the most common crimes is, is fighting and indecent exposure because of alcoholism. So, you know, obviously this is such, let's be honest, a depressing place to be. Like, it, it's so miserable to be here. Some people love being here. They love their job, that sort of thing. But, like, think even if you love your job and you're stuck out here for months and months and months at a time, hardly seeing anybody, you'd get cabin fever too. So what do a lot of people do? They turn to drinking. What can you do with that? You can develop a problem. You can drink a little bit too much. You can become... A little bit more dependent on it and uh, that can lead to some bad decisions so uh dude indecent exposure is one of the most common crimes here that sounds horrible why why would you want to do that in antarctica that just sounds painful i just ugh, that makes me shiver that'd be so cold so anyway with that little tidbit i'm gonna leave you guys here hopefully you guys enjoyed i'm gonna see you guys in our next one this was a lot of fun definitely a uh, a very unique experience to be able to see this for ourselves. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like. Let me know down in the comments where you guys want to go next. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Peace out.